All right, so you grow up uh, the son of a preacher man, and you were homeschooled, and you were a good boy who always watched his posture, and, you know, we're what, eight kids, I think, in the family? Eight, one of eight kids. Yep, I'm the one of the close to the oldest. I'm the third. Okay, and you had the pizzazz. You had, like, the sense of, like, they could tell there was something special about you to the point where your dad was like, hey, do you you know, are you into the family business? He thought maybe you would want to take over as preacher. And you, did you know, like, oh no. Yeah, it's kind of, uh, yeah, I, I, I knew it wasn't for me, you know, but I think my dad has told me um, in politics, he's, he, uh, he's a pastor and now he's a politician in uh, Georgia running for uh, uh, a house seat in two weeks. And he said, a comedian and a politician in a lot of ways are doing the same thing because they see the world and they don't like it. They don't like the way it's headed. They don't like the direction of it. And they would, they're they trying to change it. And uh, he said, I try to do it through uh, laws and legislation. And you're just trying to do it through thoughts and ideas. But it's the same mm. thing. It's really true. And you know what? The the best politicians have a good sense of humor that they can use at the right time. That That's half of Trump's charm. He's yeah. funny. That's a, Yeah, that's a, a, very funny. That's well, that's remember everyone said that about Bush. Remember, they go, ah, he's like. He's like a guy that I'd like to have a beer with, or he'd like to, he's like a guy I'd like to hang out with. The right, mm -hmm. we every comedian will say this, and not to get too like divisive, but the right is great about like laughing at themselves. Like we go to like a NASCAR race, and a guy's wearing a you know a, a sleeveless cutoff and some and some jean shorts and some cowboy boots, and you like make fun of it, but you're like, yeah, it's a joke, but we're all kind of here we're all kind of joking everything's kind of fun we can even joke about ourselves which you don't see too much from the left I'll oh just no leave it like that the left does not mock itself they no. they only no. try to ruin others that's it <laughs> they don't even mock others they just try to ruin them yeah they just they just um, yeah 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 it's upsetting and i know you've been as i said in the intro the target of it you know you I don't know if you would call yourself the victim of it because you kind of own, you know, your own foibles. But can I just say, like, from my standpoint, I, I'm still struggling to understand exactly what you were doing that was cancelable. Like, I re recognize you were behaving like a young man who's, you know, succeeding and becoming famous and maybe not, like, treating women perfectly. I get all that. But, like, how does it make you different from any other young man in that situation? Well— I think, uh, yeah, I would not, definitely not call myself a victim. I think if if um, everybody's responsible for their own actions and, and their own choices, so if that that all all this all this stuff, and you kind of know it yourself, this stuff kind of comes with being a public figure. And and as soon as uh, what's odd is as soon as I got canceled, every everybody that I knew that was a celebrity or public figure in some ways texted me like, "Hey, welcome." kind of welcome to show business in a lot of ways, which is you're like, oh, this is just kind of a part of it. But I think when you when you first you would say the same thing, like the first time anyone said anything negative about you, Megan, on Twitter, the very, very first time it was so striking and so scary. It was so scary. But now, I mean, uh, now it kind of just falls off your back and, and you go, uh, this is kind of a part of the business and, and everybody has their own opinion to you and they're, and they're all, and they're also more than welcome to. Yeah, that's right. So, so you, the, as I understand it, the, the takedown on you was related to the fact that you were publicly, you know, or outwardly this Christian guy mm -hmm. and they didn't think you were living a Christian lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You were, you were DMing or texting with women and, you wanted to have affairs with who were married, things like that, where they were like oh. hypocritical, like yeah. two-faced. But you also kind of hit your own low. The thing about your, you know, your car mm -hmm. and, and sending the tech, like that was dark. So did all that happen at the same time? Yeah. It was a terrible kind of, accident. Was, I should tell the audience what I'm talking about. You had a terrible, terrible car accident where you were ejected and you were in the hospital. And it was, and you, you were, it was a, uh, I would say it was kind of a, 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 a three, four year downward spiral that things got, you know, kind of worse and worse as you go, you have all these kind of insecurities that I grew up with. And then you kind of become successful and you become, you have, and you go out on the road and it's like, this is not a, a place for someone that's not in a good mental place. And I was obviously mm -hmm. drinking 
a lot and uh in a position that where I, I should never have been uh out traveling and I, I just had a lot of demons that i was dealing with myself and uh, i think ever anyone will tell you the story like everyone who has read anything about my story which says the same thing you do and not not to let myself off the hook i'm here to look everybody in the eye and take responsibility for all of my actions of course they're all my choosing but everybody goes this sounds like something that every guy in their 30s would do yeah right? this, like, this I is like a normal for it. and it's and i'm not like what'd you say i keep looking for the horrible like i get it's not the most perfect sure. moral behavior but yep. i mean to lose your career and then you went away to like a rehab yeah but that was that what was that was that tech addiction what was that um it was uh it was it's kind of I came off the road because it's so like you understand like in the faith in the faith culture in the faith community and 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 back in the me too movement in 2000 like 19 it was so everyone was so scared I was, it was very so, pitchforky yeah like now I think if any if these uh, people would say something about me now I'd just be like oh, okay and I, I got a show tonight that's sold out I wouldn't pay much mind to but back at the time people understand like in 2019 it was so scary but my shows are full now and they're sold out we sell more tickets now than we did before so uh, same way you 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 would read the, the read the, an article about me like you're waiting for kind of the ball to drop you're waiting for something mm -hmm. horrific and you go yes oh so there's some people that were just uh, that didn't like him Okay. Yeah. But that, yeah, kind of I, I wouldn't wish cancellation on my worst enemy. Mm, I don't know. There's some upsides to it. It is very painful. I can relate. Trust me. Horrible. But there's, there's some upsides to it. Oh, so definitely. You, you, I, yeah. It, it's a, I wouldn't, I don't like, I don't like to often probably say this publicly because um, I, w I don't like to encourage, uh, you know, cancel culture or people being outraged mm -hmm. at people. But it did, in a lot of ways, it did save my life. I've been sober uh since that day and i and i've i'm a different person than i was then and that was just i was just going down a terrible road so you don't want to say that like you know god interjected or i, I don't want to get too spiritual about it but it is i don't i did save my life yes bond charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way Founded on science and inspired by nature, all Bond Charge products adopt ancestral ways of living in our modern day world. From blue light glasses to red light therapy to EMF management and circadian friendly lighting, Bond Charge products help you naturally address the issues of our modern day way of life effortlessly. All right, now listen, I want to show you the pair that I wear when I am working on my computer and sometimes my iPhone. Look at these. Aren't these cute? They're so cute that you can get like stylish, you know, where you have like, these have the tortoise shell. I kind of like them. They're kind of saucy. Makes me feel like Bono. They come in non-prescription, prescription, and reading options. And Bond Charge also has other amazing products like low blue light bulbs, red light therapy devices, EMF, 5G protection, and 100% blackout sleep masks, all backed by science. They can ship worldwide in rapid time, and most importantly, they have easy returns and exchanges. In addition to these, I wear an orange pair when I'm watching TV, and it just seems like too bright. Sometimes it bothers my eyes. I got my kids wearing them. Doug wears them. Um, I really love these guys. They actually have great options. So check it out for yourself. Bond Charge, B-O-N Charge, C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash M-K, and use that coupon code M-K to save 20%. Don't forget, bondcharge.com slash M-K. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.